If you are watching this lesson, it's because you are learning to count. Wait, you probably did that back when you were just a little kid, in kindergarten or before that. What we're really looking at is learning how to count atoms. Okay, that's what this lesson's about. So if we take a look, okay, counting atoms. It's not like we can sit there and look at the atoms and physically count them when we're working with a chemical. So instead, we have to use our chemical formula that we've developed to, that represents a specific compound. Some examples. So we're going to go through a few examples on how to count these things. When we look at the first example, which is BEBr2, you'll notice in our formula, those subscripts, those subscripts tell us how many of that particular element you will find. So if we're counting atoms, the number of beryllium atoms in this case is 1, because by having no subscript, it's automatically assumed that it's a 1. Bromine in this case There's two bromine atoms because the subscript's two. All right, what about number of nitrogens in the second example? So this is ammonium chloride, NH4Cl. Number of nitrogens, well, we look at the formula. There's no one written. There's no other number behind the nitrogen, so we assume it's automatically a one. The number of hydrogens, well, there's four hydrogens because we've got a subscript four following the hydrogen. And the number of chlorine atoms in this compound of ammonium chloride is 1, because there is no subscript following Cl, so it's assumed to be 1. Now, if you remember those fancy polyatomic ions that we looked at, polyatomic ions, like this third example here, uh, magnesium phosphate, they've got an extra piece. And you'll notice that bracket might be present, and the number outside the bracket. Well, that number represents how many of those polyatomic ions you need. So we have to consider that as a multiple. So when we look at this, the number of magnesium atoms equals 3. It's pretty straightforward. There's a 3 immediately following the magnesium as the subscript, so that tells us the number of magnesium atoms. When we take a look then at the next element, the next element we come across is phosphorus, which is the P. But in this case, the phosphorus being part of phosphate, because we have two phosphates present, that's what the two on the outside of the bracket tells us, that must mean that we actually have two phosphates. And then if we look at the number of oxygen atoms, we see that for every phosphate, there's four oxygen atoms. We see that four directly following the oxygen. But remember, there's two phosphates, that two outside the bracket. So when we're trying to figure out the number of oxygen, we actually have to do 4 times 2, which is equal to 8. So there's 8 oxygen atoms in this scenario. Now, sometimes you're going to see a chemical reaction, and you might notice that there's a number in front of, the, of one of the chemical formula. That number in front is called a coefficient. Just like in math class, when you saw a coefficient, you might have seen uh, your example being 2x, where the 2 represents a coefficient, and it just means there's two x's. Same thing in science class. That 2 in front, so the 2 in front of the H, or in front of the hydrogen, represents the fact that we actually have two molecules of H2. Two molecules of hydrogen are present. So we have to consider that as something that we'll use as a multiple when we determine how many hydrogen atoms there are. So in this case, the number of hydrogen atoms in H2 is equal to, well, 2 for the coefficient times the 2 in the formula. That gives us a total of 4 hydrogens. If we look at the number of oxygens in oxygen in this case, we see 2 because the 2 is immediately following the oxygen. And then if we look at the water in this example, the number of hydrogens, We've got a coefficient of 2 in front, and we have a subscript 2 following the hydrogen. So that's going to be 2 times 2, which equals 4. Our number of oxygen, remember that coefficient applies to all of water. So since there's two waters, that 2 multiplies by the 1 
oxygen, which gives us a total of two oxygens. So this is how we can use chemical formula then to determine how many atoms there might be of a particular element, which becomes very important when we work at the topic of balancing chemical equations. So there's your little intro or refresh, depending on what level you're at, on counting atoms.